Good morning everybody, Rob here in Bakersfield, California, and welcome to this week's Throwback Thursday. This episode is going to be the rape, would-be rapist that got stuck in the kitchen window. Now, I was working out of Eastern Division on second watch, which is the evening watch, beat 46 John in the Sierra Mesa area. And I get a radio call, possible 459 hot prowl in progress. And I got a backup unit coming. So I head over there, I'm coming down the front street of the apartment complex where this is happening. The backup unit, which is an FTO field training officer and his trainee, they go down the alley. On the way there, okay, we're being advised that the victim's got the suspect stuck in the kitchen window and she's hanging onto his arm and protecting herself with a butcher knife. Well, just before we get there, and then we get an update on it that uh, he escaped from her and was running around through the complex and she's chasing him around with this butcher knife. And this is all coming from her daughter, who's still in the apartment. Well, the backup unit, he's going down the alley. The suspect comes running out in front of him. He gets out, slams on the brake, gets out, and they start chasing him. And they chase him right around to the front of the apartment complex, along with the lady with the butcher knife. She's chasing him, too. So I pull up out in front. Here comes this guy. Running out of the complex yelling, help, help, she's trying to kill me. You know? So I grab him real fast and cuff him up and do a quick pat down, stick him in the back seat of the car. While all this is going on, the lady comes running out with the butcher knife and the other two officers come running out. So we calm her down, tell her to go back to her apartment. We'll be there in just a second. <laughs> and so I tell the trainee to watch the suspect in the backseat of my car while his training officer and I go talk to the victim. We go back to her apartment and she tells us that her and her daughter are in there watching TV when they hear a big old crashing sound in the kitchen. And she gets up and goes into the kitchen to see what was going on and she finds this guy halfway through her kitchen window above the sink. And the sink had been full of dirty dishes and he knocked uh, some of the pots and pans and stuff down onto the floor and that's what the crashing sound was she had heard. So she snatches up a butcher knife out of the kitchen sink and grabs him by the arm and is hanging on to him and you know yells at her daughter to call the police which she does and she's sitting there threatening to cut the guy and all this stuff and he finally slips out of her grasp and runs off and she takes off out of the apartment and starts chasing him around through the apartment complex with the butcher knife. And then that's when we show up. So, I hurry back out to my patrol car and get my camera and come take pictures of the photographs of the wet footprints underneath the kitchen window to match up with his shoes. And the other officer that's there, he does some fingerprint lifting out of the, around the window for me and gets their statements so I can do all the reporting and everything. And so I go out to the patrol car and the guy's out there and he's thanking me for saving his life and all this other crap, you know. He's drunk, drunk as a skunk. So I advise him of his rights, you know, and tell him he's under arrest. And I ask him, you know, you want to tell me your side of the story, what's going on in it? Well, he says, you know, he'd had a little bit too much to drink. And he was a little horny, wanted to find someone to have sex with. And he spotted this apartment complex, decided he'd park and go walking through the complex, see if he could find somebody that wanted to have sex with him. And he sees his mother and daughter sitting in their living room watching TV. And he gets the bright idea to remove the screen off the kitchen window which was open. 
and crawl through the window and go in and have sex with them. Like, you know, they were going to be totally up for that. <laughs> I mean, he wasn't looking at it like, you know, it's rape or whatever. He just looking at it like, oh, they'll all go in there and don't want to have sex with me. He didn't understand what they were so upset about. Gee, the mentality of some people. So anyways, he, you know, he explains to me that you know, he knocks the pots and pans out of the sink and made the noise and she come in and she gets all mad. He doesn't understand why she's all mad. Anyway, she snatches up the butcher knife and starts threatening to kill him. You know, and he's just happy that we showed up and saved his life. So, based on his statements and what was there, not only did he get charged with attempted burglary, but I went ahead and threw on a charge of attempted rape. That would put him into the system uh, so that the sex crimes detectives would look into him and maybe find out maybe he's done this before. If I had just put it through as a attempted burglary, they wouldn't have got flagged on it and you know, we might have missed out on catching a serial rapist. So I take him off downtown, get him booked into jail, and go finish writing up all my reports and impound all the evidence. And, of course, he was all upset. He wanted the woman charged with trying to stab him with the butcher knife. And I'm sitting there thinking, well, you got to be kidding me. You're breaking into her house and you want to rape her and you want to arrest her for chasing you around with a butcher knife? I mean, talk about the level of stupidity. Anyway, there was a pretty good case, a slam dunk case. I had the pictures of his footprints, which matched up to his shoes he was wearing. I had the fingerprints. I had uh, the mother and the daughter's statements, and I had his confession. So, it was pretty much a slam dunk. They didn't tie him up to any other rape cases, though, so that's the way it goes. And I never had to go to court on that, so he obviously plea bargained out to something, a uh, lesser crime. I don't know what. That would happen quite often. You charge them with uh, as much as you can because you know it's all going to get plea bargained later on down the line. So anyways, I guess you had to be there because it was funnier than heck. Seeing that lady chasing that guy around with the butcher knife and him coming out yelling to me for help. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed my little story. If you did, come back in next Thursday. I'll have another one. Hit the like button and give me a comment. And see you all next week. Bye-bye.